Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be calculating the torsion of the helix. So let's remind ourselves of what we need to calculate torsion. So remember, torsion is uh, related to dBdS. In particular, it's the negative of the scalar multiple of n that is dBdS. And we calculate that by taking the dot product of dBdS dot the unit normal vector, and then taking the negative of that, and that gives us our torsion tau. So for db uh, for dBdS and n, uh, so we need, uh, remember back to the circle in order to calculate that, we needed t because we need to calculate the unit binormal vector b, so we needed t and we needed n, and let's go ahead and get a hold of those. Right, we need t and n to get b, then we can take a derivative of b to get uh, db ds, and we'll already have n, we can take their dot product and find torsion. So let's go ahead and find both t, n, and b. So that's sort of my first step here. My first step here, breaking this down, I want to find, start by finding t, n, and b. All right, so t we can get, uh, remember that uh, t, uh, t is velocity over speed. So velocity here is, we've done these calculations before, so I might go quickly through this. Um, yeah, but I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to lead you astray. So let's go ahead and calculate velocity first, calculate velocity first. So that's minus a sine t, uh, a cosine t. Calculations like this one really test your ability to calculate all of these vectors. Um, and so it makes a really good problem for, say, an exam uh, to calculate torsion of some curve. Okay, so there's v. Uh, the speed then is magnitude of this. I'm going to jump the gun a little bit because we've done this calculation so many times. Uh, I'll get square root of a squared sine squared plus a squared cosine squared. That'll just give me a squared. And then I'll also have plus b squared under the root. So I should get square root of a squared plus b squared here. If you want to see this calculation in more detail, you can go back to a previous example where I calculated the curvature of the helix. So if you go back to that example, you'll see this calculation in more detail. So that means t is 1 over square root a squared plus b squared times velocity. So minus a sine t, a cosine t, b. All right, let us remember what, how to calculate n. So we've got a hold of t, that's great. Remember what n, how to calculate n. Uh, this is a derivative of the unit tangent vector, uh, but of unit length. Remember that n is dt dt divided by magnitude of dt. That's one way to get a hold of it. Or if we're doing arc length parameterization, we could do 1 over curvature times dt um, ds. Okay, so let's see. Let's calculate a derivative of the unit tangent vector. So dt, I'm going to do it with respect to t, our parameter. dt dt will be, so we'll still have this 1 over square root a squared plus b squared. And then a derivative here will yield minus a cosine t, a uh, minus a sine t, and finally 0 for the z component. Uh, the magnitude of dt dt then, here I'll get a squared cosine squared plus a squared sine squared, so that's just square root of a squared. We're going to assume a is greater than zero. I keep forgetting to write that assumption. We'll assume a is strictly greater than zero, so that square root of a squared is just a, and so we get a over square root a squared plus b squared. Again, I did this calculation in more detail when we computed the curvature of the helix. So you can jump back there if you need to. So that means n now is this guy 
divided by this guy. And remember some nice things happen there. Uh, I'm dividing by square root, uh, or I'm dividing by one over square root of a squared plus b squared. So that'll cancel off here. Again, this happened when we did curvature. And then I'll be dividing by a, and that's gonna cancel off the a's here. So our unit normal vector is just minus cosine t minus sine t zero. That's our unit normal vector. Um, and then how do we get a hold of B? So now we've gotten, we've gotten N, we've gotten T. Now we need B. Remember our definition for B is that it's the cross product T cross N. So now B is T cross N. And that's the determinant of the matrix I, J, K. Um, T is here. One thing I can do is pull out this one over square root of a squared plus b squared. Yeah, let me keep that. I'll keep that along. So I'm going to I'm going to actually distribute that through to each component here. So I'm going to have minus a sine t here divided by square root a squared plus b squared. And then in the j component, I'll have a cosine t again divided by square root of a squared plus b squared. And then in the k component, I have b over square root a squared plus b squared. N is this guy, minus cosine t minus sine t. So minus cosine t minus sine t zero. And let's compute this determinant. So let's see, in the i direction, I'm looking at the determinant of this two by two. That times that is zero, so minus this guy times negative sine t, so that's going to be a positive b over square root a squared plus b squared uh, times sine t, and that's in the i direction. The j direction, remember, gets an extra minus to it, so we'll keep that in mind as we compute the determinant of this 2 by 2. So again, I get a 0 here. And then I get minus b over square root of a squared plus b squared times negative cosine t. So that'll be a positive. And then remember, j gets a negative. And so that's actually going to be a minus b over square root a squared plus b squared times cosine t. And then in the k direction, we have this determinant. So let's see, we have minus a sine t, so that's going to be a positive plus, I'm going to write this whole thing out because this is a complicated one, right? So I'm going to write the whole thing out. Uh, so I'm going to get a positive a sine squared of t on the top over square root a squared plus b squared minus uh, well, this is going to turn out negative, right? So this is really plus, and then I'll have a cosine squared t. And it's nice, we're going to have a sine squared plus cosine squared here over square root a squared plus b squared, and that's in the k direction. Let's do a simplification here. So uh, those two directions are fine. I'm going to pull out a 1 over square root a squared plus b squared scalar quantity. Uh, so I'll get b sine t in the i direction minus b cosine t in the j direction. And in the k direction here I have sine squared plus cosine squared. That gives me 1. And so I have a over square root a squared plus b squared. I've pulled out the 1 over square root of a squared plus b squared. So I should just get a here. And that is our unit binormal vector. One, way, one thing we can do to check our answer here is make sure that this is actually a unit vector. And so if you do a magnitude of this thing, so pull up the 1 over square root of a squared plus b squared, magnitude of this will be, what, square root of b squared plus a squared. And that cancels off with this, and so it really is a unit. So that's one little check. If it passes the check, it doesn't mean you necessarily got the right one. But if it fails the check, you know to go back and recheck it. Um, so here's our unit binormal vector. <clears throat> and 
and we want db ds now. So remember, remember what we're trying to get after here. The dot product of db ds with n is negative the torsion. So we want to get a hold of db ds. Notice we we're parameterized in terms of t, which is not necessarily arc length parameterization. And so to calculate db ds, we can use the chain rule. So db ds, um, or rather, let's say db dt is db ds. So first take a derivative with respect to s, and then use the chain rule, we get ds dt here, and remember this is speed. And so if I want db ds in terms of this thing I can get a hold of db dt, it's db dt divided by ds dt, and that's my db ds. So this is the quantity we want to get a hold of is db ds. I can take a derivative of b with respect to time and divide by ds dt. Recall that ds dt is the same thing as speed, the magnitude of the velocity, which is, we already calculated that somewhere, right? This is why it's nice to calculate that. It's square root of a squared plus b squared. Cool. All right, I think we can now do, let's, let's calculate db ds now. So db ds, well, what's db dt? So this is our b here. Let's calculate db dt. We'll divide that by speed to get db. So db dt, I can pull out this one over square root of a squared plus b squared. I don't have to deal with that. And then here I'm going to have b cosine t and b sine t. And then 0. Remember that this should be in the direction of n, so this is another way we can check our answer. Derivative of the unit binormal vector should be in the direction of n, so it should be a scalar multiple of n, and it is. Uh, and then speed, remember, was square root a squared plus b squared, so I want to divide by that. S dt, or speed, right, so we're calculating db ds here. And so it's this, and then divided by ds dt. So that's times another um, divided by square root a squared plus b squared. So let me maybe, you know, how do I write that in a good way? Ah, let me just do this in two steps. Pardon me. So there's db dt, and then db ds is db dt. I'll, I'll write it like this, 1 over the velocity. And so that's 1 over square root of a squared plus b squared multiplied with the constant in db dt. I should get just 1 over a squared plus b squared, right? That'll get rid of the root because I have two of those now multiplied on the bottom. And then I'll have uh, my db dt here be cosine t, sine t, 0. I can pull that b out um, and write this if I want, as b over a squared plus b squared times cosine t sine t and 0. And actually, this is negative n, right? What was n again? This. So we actually have negative n there. Uh, but let's just use the formula. We could sort of think about what scalar multiple of n this is, but I'd rather just use the formula. I'd, I'd rather just take a dot product of db ds with n. Uh, or rather, remember that torsion is negative the dot product of db ds with n. So that's negative uh, db ds of negative b over a squared plus b squared times a dot product, cosine t, sine t, 0, and then dot product with n, which remember was minus cosine t, minus sine t, 0. We can now calculate this dot product. It's negative cosine squared t plus negative sine squared t, so that's, and then plus 0, and so that's negative 1, 
right? This whole thing is just negative one. And so we get just b over a squared plus b squared. Finally, we are done. That's our torsion. So some things to notice here is this is a constant. So remember the circle, the unit binormal vector was constant, and so its derivative was zero. That's why the circle had zero torsion. The helix, on the other hand, has constant torsion. So it's twisting out of the osculating plane um, and at the same time, uh, so it's twisting out of the, the osculating plane at a constant rate. And at the same time, remember curvature, k, I believe, if I remember correctly, was a over a squared plus b squared. And that was also a constant. So this is a special property of, helix, uh, of uh, helixes, is that they have constant curvature and constant torsion. So that they, they twist or they turn at a constant rate, and they also move vertically at a constant rate. They twist out of the osculating plane at a constant rate. And so that is, uh, that's the idea. That's how you can calculate torsion, uh, at least for the helix. But, you know, for other curves, it'll be a similar process. It is a long process, right? This is why I've been trying to instill this in you to calculate, find out what you need to calculate the torsion, uh, write that down, and then calculate those things so you have all your pieces. I like to call this my mise en place, everything in its place, and then carry out the calculation, right? You kind of build up all these intermediate steps as you go, and eventually you get to torsion. So that's how I recommend doing it. Um, and that's it for this video, and that's it for this section. So I, there are some other formulas for torsion that you can get a hold of. Uh, by reading through your book, there's some other, uh, yeah, some other formulas you can use involving cross products of Vs and As like we had for curvature. Um, I, I invite you to uh, look at those in your text. They might be easier in some situations. Be careful about the hypotheses that are in them, right? We need the, certain things to be satisfied for the formula to work. Uh, so keep those in mind if you're going to apply one of those other formulas uh, to find torsion. All right, that's it. See you in the next chapter.